All right, folks, I'm going to get started for this evening. My name is Jenna Torje. I'll be the facilitator tonight. Um, we are here for the Oso Creek Golf Course and Open Space Plan Workshop. Uh, we'll be talking about short-term concepts this evening, and we are excited that you are here to join us tonight. Um, every few seconds I look over and there's more people in the waiting room joining us, and so I'm sure uh, quite a few folks will be joining as we get going, um, but I want to thank you all for uh, logging on this evening and being here to talk about um, this important space in our community. So if we can go to the next slide here. Uh, I want to do a quick overview of Zoom. So, so many of us um, have been taking Zoom calls from home over the past year. I think we're a year out from my official first Zoom meeting. Um, but I wanted to walk through the platform and just make sure that um, we know all the options that are gonna be there with us this evening. So the first thing that I like to do is at the top of the screen, you'll see um, that the we are um, viewing Gaurav's screen. If you click on the little carrot next to view options, there'll be an option for side-by-side -side mode. That's my preferred way to view a workshop. It shows the videos on one side, the presentation in the middle of the screen. And it just makes sure that there's not a lot of overlap in the, in the videos and the text. Another thing that you can see on the side is the, um, if you see your picture or your name, you can raise your hand um, by hovering over your picture. You can also, um, if you go to the bottom of the screen, um, my screen here says reactions, but I think for you, it should say raise your hand. So if you click on the little raised hand icon, um, it'll let us know that you have a question. We'll have an opportunity for some, for some questions and answers and discussion this evening. And so if it's something that you'd like to participate in, um, let me know and I'll unmute you. And this is just a reminder, folks, that um, we are, as you enter the room tonight, you'll be muted, but we'll be able to um, have some discussion later and let us know um, if you do have a question, we'll be able to um, unmute you there. The other piece is the chat button. Um, and so you can see you've gotten a few um, messages in chat. Uh, from our technical team. We have a couple folks on that can help with any technical issues. Um, so the first thing I wanna reiterate again is that if you are muted, that's good. You should be muted tonight. And so um, we will unmute you when it's your turn, but it's okay if you can't, um, if you can't speak right now, you're supposed to be muted. Um, but if you do have an issue with your sound, um, on the bottom left of your screen, you can click on audio settings and the carrot next to that. Um, you won't be able to unmute yourself, but if you click on the little carrot next to the audio option, uh, next to the mute button, you can switch to phone audio. I do this when there's issues with bandwidth in my home. Um, and so if you'd like to switch to your phone audio, you can do that as well. Uh, you also have the option to have your video on or off. It's up to you this evening. Um, and that is just the overview of Zoom that I wanted to do so that we all have the same understanding of the platform before we go into the meeting tonight. Um, so again, if you do have a technical question, um, let a member of my team know. We have, um, we have a couple folks on. You'll see their name is tech support in the participants list as well. You can get to that participants list by clicking at the bottom of the screen where it says participants and there's a picture of a couple folks there. Uh, so I'm going to have us go on to the next slide here and wanted to talk through, just like we were in an in-person workshop, wanted to talk through a guide for a productive workshop um, for us this evening. And these are, these are a, a set of um, boundaries that I like to talk about in a virtual space so that everyone feels comfortable being here tonight. The first thing is that we welcome your input and we're happy and excited that you can join us. Um, you know, we wish we were in person, um, but we are glad that you could be here with us tonight. Um, we are also just ask as you're writing things in the chat and you're speaking, um, I just, I don't have any um, qualms about this one. I, I know that everyone will be respectful this evening. Um, I'd say listen for understanding and share your ideas with room for others. And so we have a lot of folks on the call tonight on this um, workshop tonight. And so I wanna make sure that we can get to as many questions as we can. So you might hear me um, ask if folks can, can limit the time that they're speaking. And that's just to make sure that we can get as much input as we can this evening. Um, 
respect to differences. Uh, there might be some folks with a different opinion with, than you, and that's okay. Uh, and just make sure that we are respectful of folks. And most importantly, have fun. This is a really exciting topic to talk about. I think there will be a lot of interesting things to, to, to learn. Um, so have fun tonight. A quick reminder that this workshop is being recorded. We'll be able to post it on the City of Mission Viejo's website after the workshop. Um, and so if you have to step away for a few moments, um, or if you have any technical issues, uh, this workshop is being recorded and you can view it at a later date as well. Let's go on to the next slide. So this evening, we're going through our welcome and introductions. We'll do a quick review of what we've heard so far in our process. We'll walk through some guiding principles and talk through conceptual short-term improvements. If you don't see public comment on here, that's because we have it sprinkled throughout. So as we go through the presentation, you'll be able to ask questions in the chat, um, raise your hand and talk. And so um, we'll have an opportunity for some discussion and dialogue this evening. We can go on to the next slide. I'm going to turn it over um, to Larry Longnecker to introduce the project and the city team. So Larry. All right, thanks Jenna. You. Thank you and welcome everybody tonight um, to the city's economic development committee meeting and our first public workshop for the Oso Creek golf course and public space vision plan. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you all tonight. My name is Larry Longnecker. I'm the city's planning manager. We also have city staff in the meeting. We have our city manager, Dennis Wilberg, our assistant city manager, Keith Rite, director of community development, Elaine Lister, and our director of community relations, Robert Schick. I'd like to quickly recognize that we have Mayor Trish Kelly with us tonight and Councilman Ed Sachs and Brian Goodell. We also have several members from our Planning and Transportation Commission joining us. So thank you all for, uh, for joining the workshop tonight. Just real briefly, the city purchased the golf course in October, 2019. And since that time, the city has spent a million dollars in improving the golf course itself and the related clubhouse uh, facility. All those funds coming from the golf course revenues. So the Terrace on the Green restaurants now open. We have a new chef and a new menu and indoor seating will hopefully be open uh, very soon. In July of 2020, the city hired the MR Pro Fund consultant team to help the city envision future complementary uses and enhancements to the golf course and the adjacent public space and to prepare this related vision plan document. So MR Pro Fund has been evaluating the site, meeting with stakeholders, and they've now prepared some preliminary concepts that they're gonna share with us tonight. So again, this is the first public workshop. There'll be additional opportunities for public input. Uh, being a economic development committee meeting, uh, council members Sachs and Goodell are the members of that committee. Uh, would either of you like to make some opening comments? Yes, Larry, thank you. Um, Jenna mentioned uh, as she was opening up that this is a very exciting topic. Well, indeed it is. Uh, it's an, a great opportunity and one that doesn't come by often uh, in any city, let alone here in Mission Viejo. We know what we are, but not what we may be. When your council purchased the 100 plus acres uh, that holds the golf course, the aquatic center and the tennis facility, we did so with imagination meeting opportunity. And that's why we hired MR Pro Fund to assist in the imagining of what this space could be. Timing is so, so very important. And now we see opportunity throughout this city, but opportunity is fleeting. You know, during the COVID period, I've had a lot of time to, to read and I came across the quote by Walt Whitman that uh, I found appropriate for this opportunity here. He said, happiness, not another place, but this place, not another hour, but this hour. And I'm anxious to see the imagination that comes of our opportunity for the whole of this project. Council bought the golf course for improvement. 
And as you know, we have rebuilt and improved both the tennis center and the aquatics facility. But the purchase is not only for swimming, tennis, and golf. So I look to see the imagination expanding to our residents for the trails and open spaces, making this a place for everyone to enjoy. Frank Lloyd Wright said, again, too much reading. I'm sorry, I have nothing else to do. Frank Lloyd Wright said, no house should ever be on a hill. It should be of the hill, belonging to it. House and hill should live together and the happier for each other. This property and our residents should live together and be happier for the other. Please participate in this presentation for it is your house and it is your hill. And now your other council member, Brian Goodell. Brian. Thank you, Councilman Sachs. Um, yeah, this is a very exciting moment in time for us to see what we can become. Uh, we, as Ed said, we kind of know what we are, but what can we be and what can we become? And so this is a great opportunity for us to envision what the next 30 or 40 or 50 years, or maybe even 100 years will bring and be like in our city, our beautiful city of Mission Viejo. So I'm very excited to uh, begin this process. I'm so anxious to have this meeting. <laughs> I've been pushing and pushing uh, and COVID didn't help us at all last year, but it did give us time to do some listening to various interest groups and for MR Pro Fund to take that information and compile it into the presentation that you'll get to see tonight. I'm asking everyone to have an open mind and an open heart for what we can do here in Mission Viejo together. And uh, I hope that, I know that probably everyone comes with their own set of uh, ideas and interests and, and desires to see things happen in this particular uh, project, but, uh, but I'm hoping that we can also be open to other ideas and, and see um, just how much, uh, how many great things we can do for our city. Uh, and that, that this property really is a key piece to the future of, of this beautiful city. So uh, take it away, Larry, thanks. Okay, thank you both so much. Um, so now we'll uh, hand it over to the MR Pro Fund team to uh, give their presentation and then we'll get into some comments. So take it away, Jim. Thank you, Larry. Um, yeah, it, while we're the lead on this uh, this assignment, uh, we're we're being supported and actually led by a multifaceted team. Um, I want to introduce Cal Olson, who's our uh, golf course architect, landscape architect, that's looking at a lot of the you know the the impacts on the golf course. We have Proforma Advisors, who is our economic. Uh, uh, feasibility consultant that's kind of looking at the economics of this. We have Kearns and West, uh, who is doing our community outreach. And we have uh, Dudek, who is our urban planners and really leading us on, on the path that we should go. So with that being said, I, I um, we're, we're, we're just one of many uh, players here. We're, we're supported by a tremendous team, but uh, we're very excited to kind of hear everyone's comments and, and the direction for this uh, terrific property. Great, thank you, Jim. And Gora, if you can head to the next slide. Um, you heard about the project team in city and we wanted to do some community introductions. I know this isn't an in-person workshop, but we wanted to hear about who's on the call today um, and for you to know your neighbors um, as part of this workshop. And so, um, the first, I have two questions. Um, if folks want to raise their hand, this is a good time to practice the raise hand button and to, to practice speaking on the webinar if you'd like to. Um, or you can just put your answer in the chat. We'd love to see um, just a little bit about who's here. So the first question is your neighborhood. So if you raise your hand and tell us what your neighborhood is and what your favorite activity to do with your family is. So um, we can call on a few people here tonight. And we'll wait for to see um, answers in the chat as well. So someone mentioned that they are um, from Calafia. 
And I'm waiting to hear too what the uh, favorite activity to do with your family. All right, I have um, Robin Hook. Robin, I'm gonna unmute you and if you can share your neighborhood and your um, favorite activity to do with your family. So you should be able to unmute yourself now. Thank you. I live in the Castile homes and I think our favorite activity is really just barbecuing and enjoying family time at home. Wonderful, thank you, Robin. You're our brave first unmuter. We appreciate you being here with us tonight. All right, if anyone else wants to share, I see a couple notes in the chat. We've got folks from Pacific Hills. Um, pickleball is the weekly sport these days. Pickleball is very fun. I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about that this evening as well. Um, folks um, who enjoy walking with the family, um, walking the Oso Trail, um, and folks who enjoy um, walking in our local parks as well as um, AYSO. I thought I saw a hand raised here, but it might have gone down as well. So again, if anyone wants to raise their hand and unmute themselves there. Um, Martha is from Casta del Sol and loves walking on the Oso Cruz Trail and stopping at the coffee shop on Marguerite. She also loves pickleball as well. Got folks from Canyon Crest, enjoy walking in the community, golfing and going to parks. I'm seeing a good trend here. People like being outside. People like being outside and in nature um, and uh, playing sports as well and probably using some of the great facilities that the city has to offer. All right, so you can keep adding that if you'd like to the chat. Um, I'm gonna have us move on from our community introduction. Ooh, I see someone who mentioned really quick before we go on um, walking the dog in an undeveloped area as well. All right, next slide, Gora. I'm actually um, going to turn it over to you. So Gora, if you'd like to take it from here and just know folks, you can keep, if there's anything that is coming up for you as, as Gora is sharing different information, um, you can put it in the chat. I'll be monitoring it and making sure that we're able to get your questions or comments answered as well. So um, take it away. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Gaurav Srivastava. I am a planner with Tudek, and I am helping the MR Profund team develop the vision plan for the Oso Creek golf course and the, and the open space. I was uh, particularly excited to see your responses to Jenna's previous question because being outside and in nature and being able to partake in sports is what this entire study is, is all about. Um, what we wanted to uh, achieve today over the next 20 to 30 minutes is really to update you on our work progress and to um, map out what we've done to date and what remains to be done. Um, the Most of the discussion um, today will be centered around short-term improvements. Um, we're developing a vision plan and the components of the vision plan are both the short-term improvements, but also long-term improvements. We will come back at a similar meeting at a later date to, to discuss long-term improvements. But today the focus is on short-term improvements. Um, also know that everything that we're sharing today are preliminary concepts um, and they will get revised and refined as we continue working on them. So your input today is will be really helpful in how these ideas get refined and how we come back and shape the long-term improvements. And then a final goal for, for today really is to help you understand next steps, the opportunities you have to continue to provide input and what you can expect to see from the project team by way of ideas and, and the development of the plan. <clears throat> We've been tasked in developing a vision plan for, for these 130 acres. And when I refer to the 130 acres, there are really three components to that area. There's the Oso Creek golf course that sits north of Casta del Sol. There's the Marguerite recreational facility that comprises swim, tennis, and the Y. And then there is um, the open space parcel that is currently undeveloped and is about half a mile in length, and it sits between Oso Creek, uh, sorry, between Casa del Sol and Geronimo. 
Um, as we develop the vision, I think some of the key questions we want to answer uh, with your input are questions like, what is the best role that these 130 acres can play in the life of the community? Um, what amenities, uh, both recreational and non-recreational, can these 130 acres provide to both golfers and non-golfers alike? And finally, what can this, these 130 acres do to enhance the long-term financial and environmental sustainability of the community? To help answer those questions, uh, we've already uh, had some preliminary conversations with users of these facilities and um, stakeholders. Uh, and what we've heard from them has, um, has been very clear and simple. And what you see on your screen is just a broad summary of the input we've received to date and which we'll, we will continue to flesh out as we have meetings and conversations like these. Um, so first we heard loud and clear that the need to improve safety and provide additional amenities at the golf course was a top priority. Um, we also heard uh, the need to provide more options for food uh, and drink uh, at the clubhouse, at the recreational facilities. Um, we also heard a desire for uh, additional space for community gatherings and, and events. Um, parking was a big deal, especially on days at the recreational facilities that have events and are, and are busy on weekends in particular. Um, and then a broad set of input that related to the trail and the um, possibility of providing additional recreational facilities to supplement what currently exists on these 130 acres. Um, with that, I'll have Jenna uh, weigh in with the, our first polling question of the evening. All right, thank you, Gaurav. Um, so folks, we have one question for you and it's an in-Zoom poll. Um, so I'm gonna launch the poll here. Um, so the question you should be able to see is what recreational opportunities do you most value in Mission Viejo? So I'm gonna read through these for folks who are on the phone with us too. Um, so the first one is open space and trails, and you can choose as many as you'd like. Um, open, open space and trails, swimming and diving, tennis, pickleball, golf, youth sports, educational activities, and then we also like, if there's something that we haven't said here, um, let us know in the chat. Um, we wanna hear about that as well. So what recreational opportunities do you most value in Mission Viejo? So you can see the, uh, the bars are going here now. You can see what folks are responding with. I'm gonna wait a couple, a couple minutes for some folks to respond um, and I'll read these out. Oof, looks like open space and trails is leading. I don't know if others can catch up. We got open space and trails. Golf is right up there. Pickleball. Pickleball and education. Educational opportunities. Yeah, pickleball and education coming up strong. I see a couple notes in the chat that we don't have on the, um, on the poll here. Lawn bowling, yoga, cycling. So in terms of recreational opportunities, weightlifting at rec centers. Ooh, in terms for educational activities, space for the genealogy society to meet, library and meeting rooms, theater performance. All right, I'm gonna end the polling here and share the results with folks to see. Um, open space and trails looks like it was leading with 81% of folks who responded saying that is something that's um, something you value in, in, um, in Mission Viejo, followed by golf and then neck and neck, I think educational activities, pickleball and right there is youth sports. Um, so thanks everyone for, for responding as well and, um, and responding in the chat too. This is helpful just to learn a little more about um, folks who are on the call and what you value for recreation. All right, let's head on to the next slide. Thank you, Jenna. Um... I think that poll will validate the guiding principles that we've 
drafted to date that has been shaped by uh, our own analysis, but also input from what we've seen and, and heard so far. Um, uh, and there are five that we've identified as a, as a framework of principles that will help shape the, the vision plan um, broadly, but also identify the specific improvements, both in the short term and long term that the community might, might consider. Um, and I'll go through each of these uh, one by one. So the first has to do with the identity and reputation of Mission Viejo as, as a brand. Um, it occupies a unique position in, in the region. Uh, it is an aspirational position. And I think um, improvements that are made in, in, this, in these 130 acres really have an opportunity to build off that brand, but also to extend it. Um, um, for all of you that responded, uh, the 81% of you that responded that uh, open space and trails um, is your preferred outdoor activity, uh, you will be glad to know that extending and connecting the Oso Trail Creek, Oso Trail Creek, excuse me, is a primary goal of, of this exercise. As all of you know, it um, on the south side, the trail currently terminates at Casa del Sol, and then there's a gap occupied by the golf course, and there's um, there are currently no connections to to uh, Lake Mission Viejo, and I think this plan wants to address that gap. Um, we want to look at the open space parcel that sits south of Casa del Sol that is currently undeveloped and provides a trail connection as an opportunity for um, a generational opportunity for new activities and amenities that can really supplement what is already seen to be a recreational hub within, within the city and adjacent to Oso Creek, which is the primary recreational uh, spine uh, of the city. Um, our fourth principle has to do with um, finding mechanisms for uh, the activities and amenities being self-sustaining from a financial standpoint. To, so to explore public-private partnerships that would allow um, development and activity to occur, but consistent with the community's vision. And then our fifth and final principle has to do with uh, how we phase and implement um, the plan. Uh, we, the vision plan will provide a menu of improvements to consider, and the plan will structure these improvements so that uh, depending on funding availability and just the aspirations of the community, they can be implemented at, in, in one go, or they can be implemented over time in a phased, uh, in a phased manner. Um, and then uh, before I launch into dis discussing the actual ideas, I just want to remind ourselves again that um, we have been tasked to develop a vision plan. And there are two portions of, of that, two elements of that plan. There is the short-term and near-term improvements, which is what we're discussing this evening. Concurrently, we are also working on long-term improvements that we are not sharing today, but that we will come back and share with the community at a later date. So today you will see ideas that can be implemented between now and say three to five years that really have to address the existing uses and activities and how we can enhance and improve them. Um, <clears throat> the, the three areas that we will discuss today um, in sequence is we will first talk about the golf course that sits north of Casta del Sol. We will next talk about the recreational facility that comprises swim, uh, and, and tennis. And then third, we will talk about the open space parcel that sits between Geronimo and Casta del Sol. And that's about a half mile length. A common thread that ties all these three sub areas together is the Oso Creek Trail. Um, a principle that extends beyond, uh, across all of three, three is that the Oso Creek Trail in concept is meant to be extended from its current termination at Casta del Sol. It will run along north, along the periphery of the golf course, emerge at Alicia Parkway, and then connect to the Lake Mission Viejo trail system. And this is a long lasting aspiration of the city. And the vision plan is one of the mechanisms that the city can finally implement that, that aspirational goal of making Oso Creek Spine 
a continuous experience all the way from the Civic Center to Lake Mission Viejo. <clears throat> the improvements along the trail system, we would want to have a similar quality and be consistent with the experience of the trail that's currently south of Geronimo. So trailheads, signage, and extend that quality of experience in a consistent manner all the way to Lake Mission Viejo. All right, so the first sub area we will talk about is um, the golf course. Um, so as we all know, I will quickly walk us through the existing context and situate ourselves uh, geographically. So on the left, on this diagram, you see the existing golf course uh, layout. Casta del Sol on the south, Alicia Parkway on the north, and then the 18 holes of the golf course arranged as they are with the clubhouse sitting at the southern end of the golf course. Um, the golf course is currently 18 holes. The improvements that we are suggesting to the golf course itself have address um, a couple of uh, Aspirations we heard from the community. One, the need for additional community-oriented event space and in providing golf-related uh, activities that enhance the golfing experience. The, we also heard that often there is, like at the other recreation facilities, there is a bottleneck and lack of supply of parking. So the short-term improvements we are describing are meant to address those three issues. So I'll start with the layout of the golf course first. Um, one idea to consider is to redo the layout of three holes of the golf course by numbers nine, 10, and 18. And what that allows us to do, and this is a zoom in of the golf clubhouse area. The golf clubhouse is here, the existing parking access of Casta del Sol sits just south of the clubhouse. By reconfiguring those three holes of the golf course, we are able to add on the northeast side of the clubhouse, golf related practice areas. So a putting and chipping green, a warm up area, swing warm up area. Um, and these we have heard are supplemental activities that will help the golfing experience. By redoing the layout of these holes, we are also able to introduce an event space for community gatherings. It could be weddings or other community related events that have an association with the existing clubhouse and are able to be serviced by it. And it adds an activity that goes beyond its current golf only identity. By making these changes, we also acknowledge that there is likely to be a need for additional parking. And one way we're exploring Additional parking in the vicinity of the clubhouse is to look at the maintenance yard that currently sits just west of the existing parking. It's down a bluff and it's adjacent to Oso Creek. It is currently used as a maintenance yard. There is a feasible layout that can see the footprint of the maintenance yard shrinking to 50% of what it currently is and still providing the same functionality. And we can make use of the balance 50% to provide additional parking spaces. And we're able to provide an additional about 50 parking stalls for the clubhouse and the new activities by making these, by making these changes. Some of the images that you see on the screen relate to the additional program. So to create a new event space, that has mounds as this background and a waterfall landscape improvements that really make this a exclusive special place. Uh, and then some of the other images you see up here have to do with the golf warm up practice areas. Um, given that we're not proposing any new construction in the short term for events that require a roof, there have been solutions already considered where a tent might be a feasible way to provide shelter and there is enough room in this recreated space or this recaptured space that allows us to do that. Um, I think that covers the short-term improvements um, that vision plan is proposing. Separate from the vision plan effort, 
We understand that there are ongoing operational improvements related to the golf course. These have to do with improving irrigation, creek crossings, the creek edge, sand traps, in particularly re-landscaping the slopes along the edges of the golf course, and then improvements to the clubhouse by way of food and beverage that Larry had referred to, to earlier. And broadly, making improvements to the safety and experience of golfers over the years as, as the need is identified. I will stop here and Jenna has a few discussion questions for us. Yeah, so my first question um, for discussion is really just if anyone has any questions for Gora. He covered a couple topics um, related to the golf course and I see, um, I see a couple notes in the chat. And so if people wanna add a couple more questions of, of topics that were covered or questions you have about the short-term imp improvements, if you'd like, you can also use the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen um, to ask a question. Um, and to, um, to, talk, to ask a question of the project team as well. So um, Gaurav, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions here and I'll turn it over to you and Jim um, if you can um, provide a response. So the first um, question is about, um, there's a couple of questions about the event space. And so um, wondering if the event space can be an amphitheater of some point. Um, and then also, thinking about whether there can be a cement slab for outdoor performances um, for, the, for the event space. So maybe if you can speak a little more about what that would look like at the golf course. Sure, um, I'll, I'll address the amphitheater question first. So um, we're already proposing topography to screen this event space from the golfing experience. So we will have the ability to make use of that topography if we wanted to consider an amphitheater. So from a physical constraint point of view, there's nothing that will stop us from doing that. So we'll just, we'll, we will continue exploring that idea. Um, the second question had to do with the cement slab stage. Um, uh, whoever asked that question, we will be exploring that idea for our long-term improvements because for short-term improvements, we're not making significant construction updates to the layout, but rest assured that We've considered that idea and we'll share that with you when we come back for our long-term discussion. Great, thank you, Gaurav. Um, there's another question. You, you uh, mentioned the parking layout. What is the current capacity, uh, parking capacity at the golf course? All right, um, actually, let me go back. I think it's mentioned on the slide. So we have about 159 parking stalls currently, and they're arranged both at the upper level near the golf club, uh, golf uh, clubhouse, and then a portion of that parking is also provided on the maintenance yard lot. That's primarily, um, yeah. Okay, so a total of 211 parking stalls. No, that's 211 with the improvements. It's 159 okay. currently. Yeah. Currently, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so that's a, that's an improvement there. Thank you so much. Um, there's a couple other questions in here related to the golf course here. Um, the note about making drought tolerant landscaping, um, whether that's possible for this project. Um, and then another comment on um, replacing the distant markers on the holes, it's easy and inexpensive. And I don't know um, if, we, if we had talked about a couple of the improvements that were being made right now. And so, um, we see that in the chat. And just for folks to know, we'll keep this chat, um, uh, this will be um, kept into the record and so we'll have record of this too. So if there are suggestions you have in there, um, we'll be able to see those as well. Um, there's a question here of the location of the three relocated holes. I know we have Cal Olson on, um, but for um, Gaurav, Jim, Cal, whoever wants to answer the question of the three relocated holes. Yeah, and I'll let Cal answer that, but I, 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 that we're not relocating holes. We're just changing the configuration slightly to accommodate the, the, that event space. But uh, Cal, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, basically the, the, the greens on, on 10 remains, the T is shortened up to allow uh, some room for the warm up area. The 18th green is shortened to give us more space again for the new putting and warm-up areas so it's not it's shortened a bit and the ninth hole 
the tee is the green is brought back to make it a shorter hole to allow for the event space. So there's not really a relocation. It's more like uh, a shortening of the holes to allow for the uh, the new uh, configurations and facilities. Okay. Thanks, Cal. And it, um, I'm looking at the map here and from your comments that this is still an 18 hole course, right? Correct. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, another question that came in um, was about the trail expanding around Cypress Point. Um, so if will the trail going around Cypress Point um, impact the maintenance road? Um, and what would the interaction be with the golfers in that um, and folks at Cypress Point? All right, let Jim take that. Yeah, so I think that that's an excellent question. Uh, you know, right now there would have to be a slight narrowing of uh, of the course to accommodate that trail, um, and it also had to be fenced just for safety purposes and so forth. So, you know, we're trying to explore you know the the requirements uh, you know of that trail to minimize the impact on the golf course. But uh, you know, I think one of our goals here was really to um, connect um the the Oso Creek Trail from from its uh, current you know terminal point at Casa del Sol to it really expand it to Lake Mission Viejo and beyond to really get a continuous uh trail that you know you don't have to get you know mixed with traffic so that, that that's one of our goals we're, we're still trying to work out the details on that and the impact on the course uh, but that's that's kind of our direction currently Great. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, there's a couple questions in here about noise, and I know these are conceptual plans, but um, has there been um, any uh, notes about the noise that might impact surrounding um, communities next to the golf course? Well, I, I think noise, uh, you know, abatement was, you know, a big concern and just visual, you know, vi also visually as well. So I think that that's all, you know, in, in, in consideration and understanding the communities that it might impact, you know, uh, directly surrounding the area. So, you know, we are looking at, you know, the, the, the noise impacts and also visual impacts of any uh, new developments or redevelopments of that space. Okay, thank you. We have a, quite a few questions in here. I'm going to try and get to most of them. Um, I think we'll get to I think we'll get to all of them tonight. We have a couple more areas of the um, of the project site to talk about too. And so I'm going to keep um, keep going through these questions here. Um, there's a question in here talking about um, just a note of whether or not we could stack parking in 50% of the utility parking space with parking below with a meeting room and observation deck on top. So just um, a conversation on what part of the parking configuration could look like. Um, there's okay. another note in here about- Jenna, can I, um, Sorry, Jenna, can I yeah. quickly respond to that? To sure. George's question. So um, George, we're exploring that exact idea as a long-term improvement. So we recognize that uh, the maintenance yard footprint can conceivably accommodate uh, a deck above that would really allow us to expand parking more so than just doing it at grade. So yes, you will see that idea when we come back. Wow, George, great call on the long-term improvements there. Thank you, Gaurav, for explaining that a little bit as well. Um, we've had a good, a few notes from folks um, noting that this would be a great um, wedding uh, reception location with great views. Um, there's a question here from Todd about um, e-bikes and accommodating e-bikes on some trails. And so is there um, any um, inclusion in the in these conceptual um, plans here for um, e-bikes? Um, they would be welcome. On any trail improvements that we make, they would they would not be disallowed. Yeah, so I think currently, you know, as e-bikes e are regulated, they can use the bike pass. And I thought I also saw another question in terms of, you know, what would be the surface? You know, I, I think initially we're, we're, we're thinking it's going to be some type of asphalt or, or, or concrete service or surface that would accommodate e-bikes. Um, 
you know, we, we don't know how in terms of regulations where that will go, but our, our vision right now is that the, the trail that would continue through the golf course would probably most likely be a, a paved trail. All right. Thank you, Jim. Um, another question here about the location of the trail and why it is not heading along um, the Casa del Sol neighborhood. All right, I can, I can respond to that. So what, one is the um, configuration of the trail and it's running alongside, it's alongside the creek. And number two is the existence of the current maintenance area that we could potentially share with the trail. And just the layout of the golf course requires us to skirt the periphery of the golf course, work its way around, and then finally head up to Alicia Parkway. Um, so I, I, that's the simple answer. But we not we when we come back in a few weeks, you might see an option that actually looks at the trail aligned along um, the Casa del Sol neighborhood if we can make, make it feasible. Yeah, and I, I think the only other thing to add that to Goroff is there is a fairly uh, large uh, elevation gain, you know, from Casa del Sol to, to Alicia Parkway. So we're, we're trying to work with that as well. All right, thank you so much. Um, I have a, two more questions in here and then we'll move on to um, the rest of the presentation. Some of these questions might get answered later as well. Um, we have um, a question about um, whether or not, and uh, maybe this is for Cal, other um, parts of other holes of the golf course can be expanded because of um, the shortening of some of the holes. And so if you have um, any thoughts on that. Cal, back to you. Question was, should some holes be expanded to make up for the loss of yardages and the other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a course where yardage is, is, is the primary uh, goal. It's an executive golf course. I think that uh, the, the, the holes are fairly tight anyway. I don't at this point see a, a point to, to make any uh, extensions of any hole uh, of any consequence. I think the, the value of the, the warm-up area, a larger putting area, and the bend area uh, outweigh the lengths of the holes. They aren't, uh, hole number 10, I think, for example, was uh, was mentioned at some time as being somewhat of a, a problem hole with uh, some of the adjacent properties. Shortening that hole makes it a, a safer operation. So that's a plus. Uh, uh, hole 18 doesn't shorten that much, and it's, we have a, a proposed an additional water feature around it to make it more interesting. So the biggest change probably is hole nine, which might have been a par four, will be probably just a very long par three, which is also very interesting. So I don't, uh, your answer shortly is that at this point, we haven't looked at that and did not think that was an important criteria, but you know what, we'll look at it and see what we come up with. Wonderful, thank you so much, Cal. Just um, as a note for folks who are taking your input as part of this and we appreciate um, we appreciate you um, sharing that as well. So I'm going to move us on to the next um, the next section here. There's a couple questions on parking that I think we'll be able to answer throughout. So if I haven't gotten to your question yet, we will make sure to get to it this evening. Um, all right, heading on to recreational center, Gora. All right, thank you, Jenna. Um, so the next area we look at is the recreational facility that sits just south of Casta del Sol on Marguerite. It's about 18 acres in area and it comprises um, the Natador swim facility, the tennis facility, the Y and the associated parking. There are about 220 parking stalls currently that exist here and they're generally arranged in I would say three clusters as the big parking area that's just south of Casta del Sol at the main entrance to the rec facility. The Y has its own parking facility on the south. And then there is some expanded spillover parking south uh, as you drive along, along to Via Santa Clara. Um, 
the the number one issue that we're trying to solve via our short term improvements at the rec facility is parking. That I think that was clearly the most um, common um, concern that that we heard from the conversations we've um, had so far. So we looked at the existing layout of the parking to determine if there is a solution that is not too disruptive to existing operations and can help provide some additional parking stalls. And we ended up at a solution that made two very targeted interventions. Um, and both these interventions have to do with uh, additional parking. Uh, so the diagram on the right calls out with the red footprints, the areas that we are considering that might be feasible for additional parking. Uh, right off the drive aisle, an entrance aisle of Casta del Sol, there is currently a graded flattish area that's used um, as a yard for supplies. Um, if that is reconfigured as parking, um, it has the, the footprint for potentially 40 additional stalls. Um, another area that we've considered for expanding parking is along the lane that connects the two parking areas that serve the rec facilities um, as you head down towards uh, Via Santa Clara. Currently, there is parallel parking along this, this narrow street. And we studied an alternative where by um, expanding the footprint of that drive lane to allow for angled parking, we're able to significantly expand the amount of parking stalls that that connection is able to provide. And it's about 50 stalls. So by doing those two interventions focused solely on parking, we're able to provide potentially an additional 90 parking stalls for the rec facility without disrupting any of its existing operations. Um, another uh, comment we've heard regarding the rec facilities has been um, the need for food, drink options um, at, this, at the facility. So as we look at um, layout configurations, I think there are also ideas that we want to consider on how we can, in the short term, introduce interim food and beverage options for the, the users of this rec facility and the parents of users of this rec facility. So, and it could be um, as simple as allowing food trucks to operate in the parking lot and, and manage that and regulate that in some fashion. Um, another idea that we want to also consider for the short term is how to better connect the rec facilities that currently sit on the west bank of the creek to create new trail connections from the rec facility parking lot so that it serves as a trailhead and then connects down to the existing west bank trail that currently terminates short of, of the rec facility. So that would be a short term improvement and help connectivity in general. Um, uh, we'll talk about the ideas of bridges, but I'll hold off on that until we get to the open space parcel. But by making those trail improvements and connections, you will end up with a solution that's just better connected locally between the golf course, the rec facility, and improvements to the open space parcel. And I will pause here. This was a very short discussion because we have very targeted interventions for the rec uh, cluster. Great, thank you, Gaurav. And I wanna remind folks um, that if you are calling in by phone, you can push star nine on your phone and it will let us know that you'd like to speak. So if you push star nine, it will um, raise your hand for us here and you can ask a question as well. We want you to make sure you have the opportunity to ask a question or provide a comment. Um, there's a couple questions um, in the chat related to this. Um, and I think we have um, a couple notes First, uh, the Natadores facility not being open to all members of the community, but to members of the Natadores club. Um, and another question here about parking solutions. And so whether or not um, for these short term um, conceptual plans, if we are focusing on surface lot only or is the structure being considered? There's a note that's designed into the hills in line with councilman um, Sachs 
economy. The, uh, the short term improvements are currently looking only at surface lot improvements. Um, we might consider parking structures for longer term improvements, but not at this point. Okay, thank you, Gaurav. Um, any other questions about the rec center? If folks want to raise their hand, I promise we won't bite if you do want to speak. Um, if you want to raise your hand and ask a question, you can do that as well. Uh, there's a question in here um, about um, the trail on the ninth hole. I'm going to wait for that question until we get to the, um, the open space piece and we can talk about trail improvements more broadly. Um, so George, I have your question noted here. Um, there's another question by Kathy. Will the Nadadores club member fees be used to pay for parking improvements? Grove and Jim, have we um, considered as part of these short-term improvements how they will be funded? I don't think we've uh, gotten to that level of detail yet um, in terms of whether the Nadador's uh, fees would be used for parking. We was, what we were trying to address is there is a parking shortage in the area, especially during <coughs> during tournament days and, and so forth. And also with the tennis <coughs> tennis club and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I don't think we got to that, that level of detail. We just... Uh, know that there is a need for additional parking. All right, thank you, Jim. Um, other questions here about um, food and dining. So is um, the restaurant at the golf course being considered as um, an amenity for swim and tennis events? Um, I, I can respond to that, sure, because our, our one of our principles is that we want to better connect the uh, the various hubs of activity in, in the study area. So improvements that we can make to uh, make the walk from the rec facility nicer and better to the golf club uh, and the clubhouse would help the clubhouse being seen as a potential amenity, not just for golfers, but for the rest of the rec facility users. And um, in the longer term, there might be options where we are able to better distribute those food and beverage amenities across the entire study area. Great, thank you, Gaurav. And someone mentioned that pedest those pedestrian connections mm -hmm. you just noted would be important. Absolutely. Um, there's another question about um, about smell and the food back of uh, the impact of smell of food trucks on nearby homes, and I'm sure that will be something um, to think about. Although you might just be reminded that it's time for dinner if you have a great smelling food <laughs> truck outside. I'm just teasing, of course. Um, uh, any other questions related to, um, and Gaurav, if you wanna respond to that as well, you can. Um, and if there's other questions related to the rec center, let us know in the chat. Um, um, I, I just on the food truck question, like the, it's a pretty large footprint, the existing parking area near the rec facilities. So there are, uh, options that are further away from existing homes, which I'm sure would be the preferred options for locating those food trucks, if that progresses as an idea. Great, thank you, Gaurav. All right, so if there's other questions, feel free to add them in here. I know there's a couple questions um, related to the trail that we'll get back to as well. Um, so Gaurav, let's head on to the next section. All right. So this is our third and final area that we will be discussing today. And it is looking at the open space parcel that sits between Casta del Sol and Geronimo Road. Um, it is about a half mile walk from Casta del Sol to Geronimo on the existing trails within the open space parcel. That's about a 10 minute walk. Um, and because it is undeveloped, um, and there are no active uses or amenities beyond the trail, it really provides us an option to look at a range of potential improvements. Uh, again, because tonight we're only talking about short-term improvements, the kinds of improvements that we will share with you today for the open space parcel have to do with improving the trail user experience and what kind of additional amenities might help that experience. Um, so to situate ourselves 
geographically. Um, uh, on the left is the existing map of the southern parcel. Uh, you have Casa del Sol on the north. You have Oso Creek that runs down the middle of the parcel. On the west side is the existing recreation facility, and on the east side is the existing community of Casa del Sol. Um, a few ideas that we have explored um, as short-term improvements are one, it is likely that because the trail is now going to extend beyond Casta del Sol and make its way to Lake Mission Viejo, that the this location will be seen as a trailhead, as a location where you start your Oso Creek adventure. And if, if it's viewed through that lens, it's likely that there will be a need for some kind of trailhead parking. And we've identified a potential surface parking area that is accessed off Casta del Sol that allows trail users to park here and then begin their Oso Creek adventure. Associated with that new trailhead, we are also looking at an interim uh, food and drink option for, for Oso Creek Trail. Um, the images that you see on the screen are these jewel box one-off insertions into the landscape that are meant to provide snacks, drinks for trail users. Um, one of the more significant ones locally is the Trails Cafe in Griffith Park in Los Angeles. Um, this is located on a trailhead in Griffith Park, and it is a really successful and interesting experience because its target audience are, is our trail users, and it provides the uh, place of rest. It provides water, drinks, food for people who want to spend the day hiking. Um, it's likely that a similar amenity along Oso Creek Trail at this location becomes that new hub and uh, for a place for, for people to make you uh, take advantage of these amenities. Um, associated with um, this new um, food and beverage amenity is our improvements that will provide better access to the creek itself. Um, there are a whole range of engineering, technical, hydrological, creek edge improvements that have to do with water quality, aeration of water that the city can really explore as making the creek more accessible, but also making the creek more visible to the trail users. Uh, currently, that relationship between the existing trail and the creek is not direct. And I think as improvements are made to to the open space parcel, that connection I think becomes critical in making this a successful and interesting trail experience. Um, we also recognize that there is need for one, if not two bridges across Oso Creek in this area, um, particularly to connect the rec facility that sits up on the hill on the west side with primary Oso Creek Trail that sits on the east bank. And the bridges that could be considered should not just be seen as um, connections, they should be seen as places in themselves because they become a vantage point that really reveals the creek in, a, in the best possible manner because it's currently hidden from the creek edge. Um, so there might be overlooks, sitting areas on the bridges and really it becomes an iconic structure in itself and the, they should be designed as such. They should be designed as places and not, not bridges. Um, we also, and I think someone had a comment about stairs earlier because and I was, it was interesting to read because we have considered what the terrain of the open space parcel offers up by way of outdoor activity. Um, the, the current trail system uh, along the creek lies in the flats. It's, it's a more gentle experience and it, there's not a lot of topography that one needs to negotiate. But we know that flanking the creek on either side uh, is terrain that we can make use of. So in this segment of the creek, the city could offer up um, 
complementary trail experiences. There could be the gentle trail experience along the creek, or there could be the more ad adventurous trail experience that requires one to ascend to a higher elevation. And at that higher elevation, you again have the possibility for overlooks, but you also have then the possibility to connect down to the flats with stairs, with stair climbs. And these are experiences that currently exist in the region and, are, and that are extremely successful and popular. <clears throat> so, and just to conclude what we've shared with you today is we have looked at improvements in the short term that can be implemented between now and I would say the next three to five years. And we have looked at three separate areas of the plan and we've tried to assemble a framework that connects these three separate areas, makes them successful in themselves, but also tries to ensure that each of them connects better to their, to their neighbors. We will come back, as I've said previously, with ideas that look at longer term improvements. And they may be different from what we're seeing today, or they may be supplemental and incremental to what we've, what we've seen today. And with that, I will again pause and we can respond to questions or hear comments. Great, thank you, Gaurav. Um, I think for this, you answered a couple questions that were here. One was about the impact of parking and you mentioned the addition of um, parking for additional parking for this um, trail experience as well. Um, and someone noted that there is an opportunity here um, for wayfinding and mileage signs to destinations along Oso Creek Trail. Is that something that's been considered as part of these short-term con concepts? Yes, um, and, and those are all easy to implement short-term improvements. So trailhead signage, signage in general. Yes, so answer is a simple yes. Great. And then another question of um, considerations to current wildlife that lives along the creek. And so maybe um, a quick discussion about the interaction between nature and the expanded trail amenities. Yeah. Um, so the because this is a significant underdeveloped portion of this, this city, um, we would want any improvements um, to be that the community considers, recognize that there are existing flora and fauna that rely on this undeveloped land. So as improvements are made, whether they're recreational or better connections, they would have to be sensitive to those existing resources. Um, so yes, so they will be considered. Okay, great. And I think just expanding that, um, the idea of the reconfiguration of existing landscape and the consideration of drought tolerant plants and shrubs. Um, is that a consideration as we mentioned it before, but what would be the reconfiguration of the natural landscape? Would there be additions or would it be drought tolerant? Like what might that look like? So um, I think a, a general principle that will apply to any landscape or improvements, not just in the open space parcel, but across the board will be uh, the preference would be native landscapes and vegetation, which by their nature are uh, responsive to the local climate and drought tolerant when, when needed. So um, we haven't gone into that detail yet, but rest assured that that will guide any improvements that are made to the landscape uh, of, of this area. Great, thank you, Gaurav. Um, and just going back to the question of wayfinding, um, Keith messaged and said that wayfinding was installed about a month ago in this section, and they're continuing to the city is continuing to add signage improvements. And so that is something that's continually going to be added. And so if you're down by the trail, you might notice that um, going up as well. There's some couple questions here relating to bicycle safety and bike racks. Um, so what is the integration or the consideration of um, cyclists um, as part of these concepts? Here? Um, so we've not gone into detailed cross sections of the trail improvements yet, but what I will say is we have enough room in the cross section of the open space parcel to accommodate um, both bicyclists and pedestrians safely so and minimize the conflicts that often arise when the trail system is narrower, but I don't think we'll have that constraint yet. Okay, great. So there is that 
Um, there, there's a, a, a related question about the nature of the trail. Is it, have we gotten into what the surface, the planned surface would be of the trail or is that something that will be identified later on? Jim just unmuted himself. Maybe he wants to respond to that. No, I, I, I don't think we've gotten to that detail. I think, um, you know, we want some options within that that uh, undeveloped space that allows both paved and unpaved paths. Uh, I think we're going to be a little more limited once we get on to the, the golf course side just because of space requirements and so forth. But, uh, you know, that's something that we want to consider because we want to kind of continue the, the Oso Creek Trail uh, you know, uh, you know, really south or or towards Geronimo and and, and you know back towards the pause. So I think we want to be uh, you know consistent with what the trail is at those locations, um, but we are somewhat more limited when, once we uh, get onto the golf course. Great, thank you, Jim. Um, there's a question about um, the plans for the trail on the west side of Oso Creek and the open space um, off of, um, the question is Santa Clara, but just a question of what are the plans on the west side of Oso Creek for a trail? Um, in, in the short term that we're discussing today, the, the only improvement for the west side is to extend the trail so that it directly connects up to the parking lot of the Marguerite Rec facility, which it currently doesn't. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, there's a couple of notes in here too about um, people appreciating the, the plants that have been shared so far. Um, a thumbs up to drought tolerant and native plants. Um, and a note, a couple of notes as well as uh, about the thumbs up to bridges as important architectural statements. Uh, let me see, uh, a couple of questions as well. Um, this I think covers the whole presentation. Restrooms, are there considerations for restrooms for large events during um, at the golf course or restrooms along the trail? Yes, um, if the uh, food and beverage amenity is provided in the open space parcel, the, it would be programmed to include some of those kinds of amenities and facilities. And that's in the short term, but in the long term, definitely yes, because then we have more time to plan and design those things. Okay. Um, and then another question here from Linda about um, what will the interface between the new open space trail and the existing trail look like? Um, we haven't designed it yet. And so, um, or, the ideas we've considered so far, and I'm speaking only about the open space parcel, is that what I, what we think are feasible improvements are to have a creek facing trail experience that is improved, and that may mean bringing the trail close closer to the creek, and then have a complementary terrain related trail experience that is more adventurous. And the two at some point will um, intersect and touch each other. And at other points, we'll have connections like the stair climb. Okay, thank you. And it's, I think it's a good note that this is just the beginning and these are these, these um, conceptual, conceptual elements as well. And so um, if folks have some thoughts on that, we'd love to hear them. Um, a process question came up about how, um, if folks need to hop off the Zoom, who should they sh address um, with uh, in terms of email or call. And we'll put the email address for the project in the chat here so you can see. We'll also have a slide at the end, um, but we'll be adding that contact information into the chat. Um, a couple questions related to um, the, existing, um, the existing amenities at the course. And so uh, the question, when will the indoor restaurant at the golf course open? I think that might be for Keith. Yeah, I mean, I, I would hope sooner than later, but that's- Let me, yeah, yeah, let, let me respond to that. Yeah, that, that it'll open up during the month of April. Soon, thank you, Keith. Um, thanks for answering that one as well. 
And then, uh, Gaurav, as we're talking about these trails going through this, this large area here, um, what is the, are there, is there consideration, and I'm sure there is, but what is the consideration for golf balls and hikers and walkers and bikers as there's those conflicts between those different uses in the trail? Yeah, safety, safety will be number one. So however we design this new trail and how it relates to the golf course, we'll have to make sure that it's safe and is to standards. And if we, as we continue developing, these ideas, if some of them turn out to be infeasible, those ideas will get dropped. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. And I think safety is, is really important, especially as we're talking about um, those different those different interactions there. Um, as you can note in the chat, we've added the, um, the contact information if you do have questions or additional comments to add after as well. Um, a question here about the timeline for the short-term plans to be implemented. And I'll add to that, um, do we have any project costs associated with this yet? I'll let Jim respond to that. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think we have a specific timeline at this point. It, it is a vision plan um, and we got to look at the, the, the feasibility, uh, the impact on the environment and so forth. So. We don't have a specific timeline at this point. It's going to have be recommendations in terms of execution, and that's going to you know greatly vary based upon you know the economics and, and, and financial impact to do some of these changes. So I, I you know I, I don't think we're at that point where we we've developed a, a, a firm timeline at this point. Great, thank you, Jim. Um, I have a question or a suggestion here about um, making sure the trails can be an opportunity for community involvement, like along the Oso Creek Trail. And so just keeping that in mind as we move forward um, in the planning process as well. Uh, a question regarding the um, whether there can be a deck overlooking the ninth hole. A deck overlooking the ninth hole, and I don't know if we still have Cal with us here, um, or if that's something Jim that you'd like to. Yeah, no, I think or offer I can kind of at least respond to this question is I think in longer term uh, plans we've looked at actually um, you know decking over the maintenance yard and, and creating a more permanent space for events and, and a better dining experience. Um, but those are those those are in, within the the longer term visions, mm -hmm. um, you know. So I think you know also in terms of, you know, I think there's an earlier question whether we looked at, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> a deck parking or or vertical parking, and we have looked at those. You know, there is a significant uh, cost to do that, but those have definitely we, we, we're we're looking at longer term in terms of really building over what we, we call the maintenance yard within the golf course right now and, and, and making a much uh, better hospitality experience within that area and a probably a more permanent um, event space. Great, thank you, Jim. Um, so getting back to the trail and the creek and the interaction between the trail and creek, um, Robert has a question. Um, could the water capacity and flow in the creek be increased using recycled and recirculated water? And so thinking about waterfalls and ponds and a river walk that might be along the town center. Well, I think that in Gorov, correct, you know, you can chime in here, but uh, you know, we definitely looked at the opportunity to, you know, utilize Oso Creek. It's not a a a, a natural creek. Uh, and so forth, but we, we we did think there was a tremendous value uh, of utilizing the waterway um, and enhancing it uh, to some degree, whether we use recirculated water or, or how we do that. But we wanted, you know, that there's longer term visions of how we kind of make that creek front, and it's probably a bad example, but, you know, more of a river walk or, or, or utilizing the, you know, maybe not so much for recreation, but at least from aesthetics and ambient standpoint uh, of really utilizing that creek. 
All right, thank you, Jim. Um, there's a question here about um, what resource agencies need to have buy off on plan concepts and whether they've been engaged. Maybe Keith at the city can respond to the agency question or, or Larry. You know, you're, the question was regarding resource agencies that need to be consulted for the improvements that we're discussing tonight. Yes. Those, I believe we're so. really, I'm sorry. Yes. We're really at the conceptual stage. Um, you know, once the this plan gets kind of formalized uh, and we move into implementation, certainly will involve those various agencies. All right, thank you, Larry. And it might have been answered already, but I have in my notes here um, the question on funding and what would be the funding plan for these short-term improvements. And, and Jim, you might have said that that, it, that is still being worked through, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're, what we're trying to be also is we're looking at trying to be fiscally responsible and, and whether those are uh, you know, third party developers or third party partners or, you know, public private uh, partnerships, but that's definitely going into our, you know, considerations in terms of, you know, how will these be funded, whether it's grants, uh, whether it's city financing, or, or if it's, you know, a third party partnership. So I think, you know, that that's, you know, we haven't figured it all out yet, but that's definitely within our, our, our thought process because, we want this to be both, uh, you know, ec economically viable and, and environmentally viable as well. So we're, you know, th th those all kind of go into our considerations as we develop the vision plan for for, for those at Greek Golf Course. And just Great, to be thank clear, you, Jim, and I vision, think Dennis. Oh. I was just going to say, just following on that real quick, that the the scope of work for the MR Profund team includes doing a um, market feasibility for the various alternatives that we come up with. Great, thanks Larry. And Dennis uh, Wilberg, uh, you are unmuted. Thanks, I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on the funding of these improvements and the time frame. Uh, our, our goal would be that these, and the reason we're calling them short-term improvements um, we're, we're hoping these are the types of improvements that could be accomplished in the next three to five years. Um, and the main source of funding for everything that's been presented tonight uh, will continue to be as we've done improvements to the golf course itself and the, the clubhouse proceeds and the net proceeds from the revenue generated by the golf course itself. I think earlier it was mentioned we've spent over a million dollars on improvements just in the first year that we've owned the golf course. Um, so the basic concept is whatever net revenue we generate from the golf course, we're putting it back in to the course of the open space to improve that area. So hope that helps a little bit. Great, Dennis. Thank you for that, um, that um, explanation as well. Uh, there's an, the, our last note in here is that it's, there's, it's good to make improvements, but keeping the green fees reasonable as well. So I'm going to have this go on to the next slide. And this is the reminder that your insights will be used by the project team to inform the development of the Oso Creek Golf Course and Open Space Vision Plan. We've really appreciated how many folks have joined us tonight and how many questions and comments they received. Um, I know it's, it's a lot to take out of your evening and we appreciate um, the insights that you've provided to us. If we can go to the next slide, I wanted to talk about um, what the next steps will be. We'll have a community-wide survey uh, that will go out to folks in Mission Viejo to, to respond to some of these um, these uh, short-term improvements that the short-term concepts that have been shared here tonight. And so this isn't your last opportunity to provide input. There'll also be future workshops on, um, along, on long range visions for this as well. So keep on the lookout for that. Um, and of course, there's always planning commission and city council meetings as well. If we can head to the next slide. 
Um, this is in the chat here, but if you do have any further questions um, or comments that you'd like to add, you can email visionplan at cityofmissionviejo.org. And uh, the number to dial is on the screen as well. And just to see, it's, it's really, it's a really cool um, webpage, I think, um, the osocreekgolf.com slash planned dash improvements. Uh, this, we'll add this to the chat as well. Uh, it's, the city has done a great job in sharing what's already been improved and what's planned um, at the golf course with the timeline as well. It's a really cool thing to see just the, the process and progress of the golf course over time. So I would say definitely head there, check it out, um, and stay tuned for more um, opportunities to provide input as part of the process. So again, just want to thank folks for joining us tonight. Uh, we are looking like we're ending right on time. I hope we were able to get your questions answered um, and any comments that you have. And again, this is recorded and will be hosted on the city's website uh, after the workshop. So if there's anything you missed or had to step away, uh, you could always go back and view it as well. And uh, if you um, would also like, you can share this uh, this link with, uh, when it's live on the city's website, you can share it with your friends and neighbors and folks who weren't able to make it here tonight. And again, thank you all for joining. We're going to keep this um, webinar open for two or three minutes. If there's anything that you uh, missed in, this, in the chat, you can go back and read that as well. Um, but we'll have a summary of this workshop for folks as well. So thank you all for joining this evening. And we will talk soon.